This topic is about spatial design, that is how things actually get laid out on the screen, and some basic principles for how to do that. So let's begin reviewing our, our concepts that we learned from uh, the anatomy of the eye and the vision system. Remember that we have the macula, high resolution, and the periphery. Periphery is low resolution, it's gray. It looks like what we see down here in this image. It looks like what we see here. Um, fundamentally, one of the problems we have when we build a user interface is the search problem. That is, our user brings up an interface, example the web page we see here, and they're looking for something. They're looking for a piece of information, they're looking for a button that will delete, they're looking for how to create a new video, they're looking, this happens to be Skype, they're looking for how to make a telephone call, whatever it is, the screen comes up and they're now in the business of looking for something. That's why we're so interested in what happens relative to the macula and the periphery because the periphery allows us to look fast in parallel. The macula allows us to look accurately, accurately but slowly because we have to move five times per second according to the saccade. So if we move forward, here is the Skype website and here is its blurred version. And let's suppose what we really wanted to do, in this case, it's assuming that you don't have Skype installed. So they want you to download Skype right here, and they're going to give you a bunch of other options that you can do over here. Now, if we look at the grayscale version, we see this is pretty prominent, but the picture is even more prominent. Okay, the most important thing we see is somebody here. Now maybe that's what Skype wants us to do. They want us to feel good about actually making phone calls and communicating with people and make us feel human and that's all good. Um, now, if we look over here in the menu, the menu stands out fairly well but not great. So if we were going to rely on the menu to tell us how to get Skype, not quite so good. But that's okay because what they've done is they brought this up here and that stands out. That's going to be one of the first things you look at. You're going to look at the picture, look at the picture, look here, look here. This, less contrast, you're going to look at that later. So, this is going to bring us to looking here. That's going to be a good thing because that fundamentally on this page, that button right there is what they want you to see and what they want you to do. All right, let's look at this page here. We're going to review this one. Um, if we look at the grayscale, the first thing we're going to see is we're going to see this big piece right here. Then we're going to see this. Then we're going to see these. And then this logo right here is going to stand out. Now, one of the things about you'll notice about this logo, for a lot of us in computer science, we know exactly what that logo is, even though we can't read it. That's Microsoft. There's a reason they always have Microsoft in that same shape and in that same font. Because once we have read that hundreds and hundreds of times, when we see it in our periphery, even though we can't read it, we know that's Microsoft. And from their point of view, that's a good thing because they're getting our peripheral attention, not just our macular reading attention. Okay, now if we look at this in blurry color, we'll see that this comes out and these still come out and these still come out. Notice here that what draws your attention with color and what draws your attention with grayscale, notice they put that together. Notice they're appealing to the same set of things. Look here, look here, look here. In color, look here, look here, look here. This, not quite so much, but it's still there. Okay, so unlike the, the last video where these things were all out of sync with each other, this is a very nice design. The color version, the grayscale version, they're all in sync with what they want you to look at. Okay, let's look at the actual website. Here it is right up here. Notice the first thing they wanted us to look at? This is Microsoft. They want you to know that. The next thing they want you to look at 
is here's an advertisement. These are the current products. Right now they happen to be pushing Windows Phone. This group is interesting over here for home, for work, for IT pros, or for developers. What they're trying to do is they're trying to sort out what kind of a person are you. So in the grayscale, in the color, they've drawn your eye to tell me what kind of person you are and I can give you a better way of experience based on where, what your purposes are. And the last thing down here are various products that they're highlighting. Flight Simulator, Office, Play, The Connect. Okay, so these are possible product lines that you might want to be interested in that they have to be pushing you right now. Very nicely designed site. Main promo, who are you? More detailed products that we happen to be pushing right now. Those are the first things that you see. Those are the first things your eyes are drawn to. For those kinds of things, this site is really easy for my eyes to know what I should be looking at. Okay, now we've talked about the macula and the periphery and how we can attract the periphery, and that's a good thing. The next thing we want to talk about is something called scanning. There are three characteristics we have for scanning. First is the reading scan order. And that is when you approach a page, you approach a page the same way you approach a book. And you tend to scan across the page in the same order that you would a book. Uh, now culturally this varies between uh, languages that read right to left and those that read left to right. But people have been trained for reading for a long time, so whenever they approach your page they're going to use this reading scan order. The second thing we're going to look at is hierarchic scan, which says, I'm not actually going to look in detail across this entire page. I'm going to look for groupings. I'm going to look to try to understand the groupings. And I'm going to try to skip across groupings. Somehow find me a faster way to get at the thing I'm looking for. And one of the ways I'm going to understand this hierarchy is through the use of white space. White space isn't always white, but that's what it's called. Sometimes it's called negative space. So these are the three things we're going to talk about when we talk about scanning. All right, so here's our reading scan order. We actually started at the top. The first thing we did, that's why Microsoft put its logo right there, is because that's the first thing you're going to see. You're going to look right there, and it's going to say Microsoft. Now, you're going to start scanning over here, and you're actually going to stop right here. The reason is your periphery is going to tell you there's nothing over there. But the next place you're going to go is right across that menu. Okay, if you're reading this as a book, that's where you'd go. Now, you're actually not going to read this as a book because the first thing your periphery is going to tell you is it's not a book. It doesn't look smooth like a book. It doesn't have text arrangements like a book. So you're going to tend to override a little bit by what your periphery sees. So maybe you read to here. You'll skip that menu because look how vague that menu looks and skip immediately to here. But your reading order is going to tell you, once I've understood this, I'm going to go here, not here. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do from here is go over to there. Unless you do something visually to direct me otherwise, that's my natural way of scanning. Now once I get here, the periphery is going to say keep reading this. And once I get down here, then these look more interesting than coming back here. So reading is going to get you started, always up here. But the way you design visually, you're going to go here, reading order, down here, across here. OK? You want to think about that scan order. How are people going to work their way through? So here, let's look again at the Microsoft site. And what was it we did? We Microsoft got that. Advertisement got that. Down through who are you? And maybe we click before we ever leave here. That's okay because now, as the website owner, I know a lot more about who you are and what you're interested in. And then I can carry you across these products. Back, I can come back later here and download Internet Explorer. I've actually got a menu down here of things. I've got a menu here of things. These I can always come back to later. But that scanning order is what led us through that website. Okay. Let's look at Skype. First thing, logo. First thing, logo right there. Then I went across the menu. And as I came back again, 
the thing my periphery tell me is look right here. So my scanning order is going to tend a little bit to override this picture. Picture looks good, but if I'm doing left to right, now if I'm in Hebrew or Arabic, I'm going to want to take this thing and put it over here. Okay, and then lastly, I'll come down here and start scanning through these. These, but I'm always going to start here. I'm going to start doing like this, unless I'm over do an override from my periphery, and I'll see that when I do my blurry gay scale to see where those things are. Look at this Food Network right there logo boom upper left corner scan right across the menu and then I go through these blocks of things now we're going to come back to this one because this is more of a hierarchic arrangement there's really not a good scan order to this particular website okay the hierarchic scan what the hierarchic scan says is I know this is not text so I'm not going to really read it what I'm going to try to do is make global sense out of it. There's a group of things over here, a group of things over here, a group of things over there. Okay, that's my hierarchic scan. So let's look at it. Here's that same Microsoft page, but let's start to slice it up. Okay, I can actually slice this up. I've got this up here, this group over here, this group down here. Within this group down here, I've got each of these individual groups. I've got this group here and this group here. And then there's a bunch of stuff in here. Okay, my eye is going to immediately see that and we'll look in a minute. It's going to come from the white space. The white space is going to tell me that structure. But what this structure is going to help me for is I'm going to look right here when I start reading and I'm immediately going to say menu. And I did what I wanted wasn't the menu. Over here I'm going to say phone nope don't care about phone I'm gonna go over here and say work yes I care about work I'm gonna skip in big blocks I'm gonna say home work no I don't care I'm looking for products keep moving okay so if I'm looking for products as soon as I see these two I'm gonna skip for something else okay so what we want is we want a structure and it's hierarchy because it's got the whole structure and then broken down and then broken down broken down broken down broken down it's a hierarchic structure but what we want to do is within a particular visual group we want everything to be the same kind of thing if they're all the same kind of thing then that allows the user to sample it, it allows the user to say oh this is dividing people up by what they do I don't care I don't have to actually read all of them so that's the hierarchic scan put them in groups that make sense together and then that allows me to skip rapidly from group to group without reading each group in detail that's my hierarchy okay here what we want to look at is we want to look at white space because white space or negative space is going to give us our hierarchy so if we look at this for a minute we can see the groups that it's divided up into. Um, there's going to be a group right up here. See, that's all the same with the menus and the items. Notice we've got, we're divided here. We've got a set of things across here. If we look at this, these are actually shows with pictures of each. Notice each one of them has a very consistent look. Each one of them is a show. So I look at the first one and it says, you know, Food Network Challenge. Oh, that's a show. I look at this one, it says Recipes. Yeah, this is what I want. I'm going to concentrate on this group right here because I'm looking for recipes on the Food Network. Okay? But the white space, these gaps here, that's what's giving us our structure. That's what's helping us. It's very easy for the periphery to understand that that piece up there is a separate piece. That nice gap right there separates this piece. That gap right there separates this piece. Okay, if you get excited and say, I want to get more stuff crammed on this screen and you press out those white spaces, you're killing the ability of your periphery to find. Okay, so having seen that white space, we'll actually look here. I actually don't like this technique. But they've got these little fine lines that do these separations. The reason I don't like them is because they're distracting. People tend to put these in 
when they have compressed out the white space. They get so much on here that they get too close together. I prefer that you use the white space, open it up, spread it out, because then it makes it easy for your periphery to find things. These little things right here, these are just distracting. But, in terms of a hierarchic organization, here's a bunch of recipes. Here's a key recipe. Here's a recipe recipe. White space established that big group there, and it's all recipes. Now look what we've got down here. In this group, it's show, show, show. See all the shows. Everything in this group is all about shows. And as we noticed in the grayscale, it made it really easy for us to sort out who was what. Okay, pretty good design there. Okay, here's a different use of white space. The use of white space here is to really simplify what's going on. It's almost all white space. What they're trying to do here is they're going to say, look here. Big expanses of white space. It's an outline, an outline, look here. Because basically what they're saying is this is fly.com. Come right here, tell us where you want to leave, where you want to go. Notice this is big out here, surrounded by lots of white space. That thing's just standing out there, it's in color, it's dark. Click right there. Tell me where you want to go, where are you going to leave from, click this button. I'm going to do it all. Okay? So this is a, a use of white space that makes it look clean, makes it look open, makes it look uncluttered. All right. So that was our search problem. That was how do we organize this so people can find things, and we can find things fast. Now what I want to talk about is the layout problem. How do we actually arrange things so that they look good? We got three things, grid systems and alignment, balance, and rhythm or repetition. So we're going to use these three concepts to control how we do a layout. All right, this looks ugly. It's just four boxes, but it looks ugly. And the reason it looks ugly is because they're all sort of different widths apart, and the tops are all screwy, and the bottoms are all screwy, and it's all disorganized. Now sometimes you're looking for a chaotic look. Sometimes you're looking for a rough random look. But for most user interfaces where you're trying to get a task done, not trying to draw attention but get work done, this stuff is just distracting. Every time those things don't line up, they're distracting. Okay. This is better. This is better. Notice how, peace, how much more peaceful this feels. Sometimes you don't want peaceful, but for most inner user interfaces, you want the user interface to go away. You don't want it to be in your face. So look at that. Tops are all aligned. Bottoms are all aligned. Spacing is all equal. All right, this is pretty good. Let's think about this in terms of our scanning. Let's think about this in terms of our saccade. So I start right here and I'm reading across here and this is not what I want. Well, from here to here and then from here to here because I'm reading, I'm going to end up here. If that's a constant distance in a clear spot, so my periphery, I don't have to think hard. My periphery is finding that line across the top there. I know exactly where the next thing starts and I know exactly how far away it is because it's always the same distance. Okay, so I'm working, I'm reducing the amount of work. It's the second theme beyond search is reduce the amount of visual work. I don't want to think about it. I want it to just become easy. Alignment, spacing, big things. Okay, now this one will actually look better than the previous one. And the reason is, let me show all, let me show them all of you together. So this middle one right here has a problem because these two things, these three things right here, they look like they're almost the same size but not quite. So as your eye is trying to make sense out of this, it's trying to say, oh, these, these are all the same. And then it's going, well, no, they're not. This is sort of different. 
and this is sort of different. And now visually I'm spending time on sort of different when it doesn't matter. I don't want you spending time on sort of different. I want you reading what's inside of these blocks. I want you to learn what's inside of these blocks. So this one's better. Nobody believes that this block and this block are the same size. Nobody believes that these two are sort of the same. Okay? So the differences are clear. These two are exactly the same size. Not kind of close, sort of maybe, exactly. And these two are very different. Not just sort of kind of a little bit different. You don't want people to spend visual time trying to figure out is that the same or not. It's distracting. This one is different than that one. Got it. My periphery sees it instantly. No problem. So here's a mechanism that's been developed to let us look at this problem. Um, it's called the 960 grid system. Now this grid system will work for screens, so sort of like desktops. It will work for large tablets. It will not work for smartphones. Okay, A grid system like this really isn't helpful. Um, the search problems in smartphones are different. They're in the hierarchy and in the linking. We're going to talk about that in another video. Okay, the 960 system comes in multiple grids. We're going to use the 12 column grid today. And the reason it's called the 960 is because that's the number of pixels across it is. So, 10 pixels of white space there, 10 pixels of white space there. That comes to 20 pixels. That leaves us 940 pixels left. Now, if you look at this, I've got 60 pixels. If I go two columns wide, I got 140. Okay, so what's happening is each one of these, the white space is 20, and the column is 60. And as you put them all together, notice that nobody confuses the sizes of these. And then we've picked the 20 pixels as our white space, so we've got nice, good gutters in between. Makes it easy for our periphery to see where the breaks are. Okay, this particular grid system, you can find it. There are templates for using it on the web. It's not a hard thing to do if you have to write it in code. Uh, you can find it online. Just look for the 960 grid system, or even just look for grid system. You'll find 960 again. Okay, here's that same diagram. Now, this diagram is telling you the various widths. These can actually be as tall as they want. It's telling you the widths, which is... One column, two columns, three columns, four columns, five columns, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The other thing this is designed for is it makes it easy. With a 12 column grid, you can break it up in a number of easy ways. So you can do three columns, three columns. That gives you four columns, each one three wide. I can go four wide in threes. Twelve is a really nice mechanism for how do I break up my page. Um, a lot of systems will go all the way across and then break up into columns. It makes it really easy to organize your page. You don't really have to think about it very hard. So go back and look at grid systems. Now, let's continue on our discussion of alignment because alignment is important. And this is a good page. This is a good design for that. So you look, see right here? This lines up. See these guys? They line up right here. These guys, they line up right here. Notice these right edges. They line up. By lining up, we're eliminating complexity. I don't want you thinking about this over here. I want it to be clean. Same way over here. They got off just a little bit. Okay, this whole thing is really good on alignment. See these guys are all the same. Here we purposely broke alignment. That's because we wanted to draw your attention here. So we purposely broke up that alignment right there. Okay, these guys align over here. What this is doing is it's creating order, and wherever there's order, your visual system says, I understand, and it won't continue to look there. Okay, this is good. They blew it in one place, right here. This right here doesn't align with anything. These guys align with themselves, and they're completely unaligned visually. They didn't line up here. They didn't line up here. They just blew it right there. 
somebody came in and added that after the fact. It's not clean. It's not good. Okay, our next concept is balance. As I look at my page, I want it to look like it's balanced. So if I put if I put a balance point right in the middle here, will it look like it fits and it sits, or does it look like it's going to tip over to one side? Okay, this particular slide, this right here looks balanced, and that screws it up. Okay, that thing right there makes the whole thing visually unbalanced. It's sort of tipped over to the left. Very common mistake. I could clean that up. I did that on purpose, by the way. I clean that up if I centered that heading. If I centered that heading, now everything's in balance. Sometimes, and in some cases, you want it out of balance. You want to draw attention to it. You want to not make it look boring. But almost always, unless you're building web pages or visual designs where you're trying to grab people's eyes, you want it balanced. You want it comfortable. You want them to not be distracted by your user interface. Okay, here's a bad one. This is so common. I've got a list down the left hand side and I've got all this blank space over here and this slide looks terribly out of balance. Now, one of the things that helps is this slide is black which means there's nothing shining on the wall and if there's no border around the screen people will just recenter their eyes around this and it'll be okay. If I put a border on it of any kind it would be very much not okay. Everything's sitting over here on the left side. Looks really out of balance. Okay? Different approach. Notice what I did. I put it in two columns. I centered the heading. This thing is now in balance. Feels much better. I probably don't want to read this way. In list in two columns has better balance. Right. I probably want to read it this way and then this way. But that's okay. This one. Notice we've got all this stuff over here. We've got the menu, we've got the logo, and then notice what they did over here. They could have taken all this stuff and stacked it up. They could have taken it up down here. By putting it over here on this side, this whole thing is balanced. Okay? I almost never need all that space to give me the destination of where I'm trying to fly. But by giving that long space, it's balanced. See this here and this here? It adds to the balance. Putting that travelers out there, this thing is still squirrely. Okay? Use this to balance this. Use the length to balance this. Okay? It's a little bit left heavy right here. Okay? But that just comes from that's the way we read. We like things aligned on the left. Okay. Good balance. Look for that. In almost all cases, you can improve your balance simply by rearranging the things that you've got. If you just take a moment and say, is this balanced or is it out of balance, move some things around. Okay, the next thing we want is rhythm. Rhythm is do things occur in a regular order. Again, what we're trying to do is we're going to trying to enhance the performance of the saccade. So every time we see rhythm, that allows us to predict where things will be. When we visually predict, then we can move forward, move forward, move forward. That's a good thing. All right. We've got rhythm here. See it popping forth across here? We've got rhythm here. Boom, boom, boom. They're regular. Boom, boom, boom. We've got rhythm here. See, they're all the same width. Boom, boom, boom. I know how that's going to come out. My eye knows how to go plump, plump, plump across here. The rhythm is in between here. Same gap, same gap, same gap, same gap, same. Okay, consistency. We're going to look at very various kinds of consistency. We're going to look for a consistent look. We're going to look for everything in a logical pace, place. We're going to look for consistent graphics and images. So let's start with this. There's back to our food network again. What I want you to look at is I want you to look at this menu up here. Okay, we've got this menu up here, and we've actually got three tabs. Recipes, Shows, Chefs. Okay, as we click across those three tabs, here we are in Shows. This down here has a pretty consistent look in terms of how things are organized, fonts, etc. But this up here is identical. 
Okay, this is really, really important that this be identical because now I know what that is. I know exactly what that is. I saw that on the last page. I don't have to study this. I know what I'm going to find there. I'm going to find a menu of shows. Okay, again, chefs. Underneath it, I'm going to find a menu of chefs. It's all consistent, consistent look, the logo is the same. One of the things your eye is going to be looking for is differences. If you make this the same, then I can say, okay, I know what that is. I can go on. Notice this said chefs, here are chefs. The previous one said shows, here are shows. Said recipes, this said recipes. Again, consistent. I know what I'm looking for. I'm not working hard. Do not make me work to find things in your user interface. Consistent logical layout will help make that happen. Okay, consistent graphical style. I want to tell you about birds. I've got country, I've got cartoon birds, I've got baby birds with their mouth open, and I've got adult birds. Okay, that's a very confusing set of messages. Cartoons, babies. One of the things about baby birds is they don't actually look much like adult birds. In fact, baby birds as we see here are basically a mouth with a little bit of a body left on it. This is much more consistent in style. Notice they've all got blurred backgrounds. They're all adult birds. They're all seated. They're all on twigs. Very, very consistent. A little inconsistently in the color, but the graphical style, I know when I look at this, I have a harder time. I know this is about birds, but what is it about birds? This is different, this is different, this is different. Why are they different? Thinking, 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 why, why, why? I understand this. This is three pictures of birds. Okay, here's a really bad one. Up in the upper right here, it's techno, it's abstract, it's looking for stuff. Down here, it's cartoon, it's kids. Really? Those things have nothing to do with each other. Never put them together on the same slide unless you're intending to talk about the contrast between the two. Yeah, this is just font choice. Font choice is a big deal. Consistent font choices. Never use more than two or three kinds of fonts. One of the things computer science students is they find they can choose fonts and they want to do all of them simultaneously in the same user interface. Never, 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 never. You're making people think about things that aren't important. One of the things you got to think about is this, is this font information or is it art? So, for example, in that Microsoft logo we looked at, the shape of it was as important as the fact it said Microsoft. The IBM logo, for example, is more of an icon, more of a visual artifact than it is a piece of information. When you're looking at wedding announcements, one of the reasons wedding announcements are typically hard to read is because they chose the font for its artistic quality, not for its ability to convey information. Uh, avoid centered text. We can come back and visit this. Avoid, we already talked about this. Avoid very, very long streams of text. And last of all, leading and kerning. Leading is the space in between. We talked about if you add more space, it will actually allow you, make it easier for you to do your scan and do your and kerning is how far the letters are apart bringing them together can make it look cramped but it can look intense spreading it out can make it look good okay the last principle we want to talk about is simplicity this is Expedia and this is busy there's a bunch of things going on here I've got this Caribbean thing over here with big color. I've got this Groupon thing going on over here. I've got my search button, which doesn't actually stand out from all of this stuff. I've got this book a flight in a hotel at an angle, which is going to attract attention. I've got this menu going on here. I've got two different kinds of menus of menu and combination. And then down here, I've actually got when I want to fly. And this is really, really, really busy. You got a lot of stuff. 
but let's compare it to this one. Very focused. Very focused. Now, some people would look at this and say, there's a bunch of things I just can't do because that information is not on the screen right now. Um, and that's true. But I book a lot of flights. And 99% of the time, what I want to do is I want to say, give me a flight from here to here on these days. Search. That's it. You can give me the other controls later. You can refine that later if you allow people to do very simple, very clean. Okay, here is the king of simple and clean of all. Okay, you could build search sites and you could have a gazillion controls. But what Google chose to do is said, you're going to type a few words and our software is going to figure out and do the right thing. One of the things that happens in this particular choice is they've accepted the challenge if we're going to let you just tell us the information and rather than you fiddling with a bunch of controls we're going to try to do the right thing as best we possibly can and they've actually done pretty good at it nobody anywhere on the planet is confused about Google's user interface it's just simple so we've been through a lot of stuff here's what we've got I start out in the beginning. We've got a macula and a periphery. The periphery can search fast, but it's gray and it's blurry. Be careful. We've got a scan order. We've got our reading scan order. Starts in the upper left, moves back and forth, top to bottom. That means put important items top and left. Other languages, top and right. Okay, we've got a hierarchic scan which says I can find big groups of things and eliminate them. So instead of steadily searching everything, I can say, is it this? Is it this? No, it's this. Okay, that's what the hierarchic scan is. And the way we get to that hierarchic scan is white space. Now in this case, the white space is black. On this slide, the white space is black. Notice we put more space between the overview and here than we put between here and here. That's on purpose. This is a different thing than this. We're just using that white space to do that separation. Layout. We've got grid systems. What the grid systems do is they give us alignment, they give us white space, they give us good meaningful sizes for our columns without thinking very hard. Nice idea. Balance. Balance is left to right. Notice we've got this list down the center of our slide and we've got it centered under the title. Balance. Rhythm. The separation and size of things. Boom, 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 boom. Every one of these lines is the same distance apart. Makes it much easier. My eyes not trying to figure that out. All this is the same. So rhythm. Consistency. Logical layout. Put the same things in the same place all the time. That way I can start to remember where they are. And consistent use of imagery. Use the same kinds of imagery for the same purposes. Because what we're looking for overall is simplicity. Do not make me work hard. Do everything you can to create, to remove visual distractions that I have to think about that are unrelated to the task as to why I came here. Okay, that's your quick introduction to spatial layout.